Hey everyone, uh, I'm Jacob and I'm here with Katrina Scott. Uh, Katrina is a senior engineer um, who's worked at Facebook and Uber. Um, and today we're going to be talking a little bit about interview structure at uh, different types of tech companies. Um, so Katrina, um, yeah, I'm wondering, uh, could you just tell me a little bit about the structure of the typical software engineering interview? Cool. Um, first, let's start with the big company, since theirs are a lot more standardized, and then we'll sort of drill down into what a late stage startup and a very small, like 20 person startup would look like. So first, starting with the big companies, these are your public companies such as Google, Facebook, Amazon, and Microsoft. Mm -hmm. They all have a pretty standard interview process across the board, and it's the more traditional interview process. That is, it's going to be three up to maybe five data structure and algorithm problems. And then depending on what level you're coming in at, whether you're a new grad or you're someone who's more on the mid to late late career stage, there will be an architecture interview. And some of these companies might have some sort of behavioral interview, sort of getting at are you a culture fit for them, but for the most part, it's very bread and butter, data structure and algorithms. Did you take that? Do you know it? All your different stacks, arrays, maps, all these things. So that's sort of your big company. Um, next, let's move into the late stage startup. So I would say in the last five years, we've seen a trend um, of people not wanting to sort of copy what these larger, more established companies have done because they've decided that, hey, just doing a launch of data structure and al algorithm questions is not actually a good tell as who's going to who's gonna do well at our company. Mm -hmm. It's something that people often learn in school. What if they didn't necessarily go to school? They did a coding boot break boot camp. Um, it just doesn't fit a more wide range of backgrounds. So people started introducing coding or coding challenges or different types of interviews that are met to get at more what your day-to-day -day job is going to look like. So a couple examples of this that I've seen are a debugging interview. So for example, you they give you a pre-built code base they made themselves, or they've checked out a code base that has a bug in it. And either usually they give you what the bug is and it's on you to sort of figure out and fix the bug. And a lot of what they're looking for there is, hey, a lot of what we do is software engineering. It's not just writing code from scratch. It's actually finding bugs. And are you able to take a pre-existing code base, go through it and find the different bugs um, and sort of walk through your logic mm -hmm. process. Another one I've seen is a very strong focus on culture. So that might not even be done by a software engineer. And it's not just like your typical behavioral, oh, have you or just someone had a conflict? It's really trying to get to know you and seeing if you would fit into the company. And then lastly, again, trying to sort of bring it closer to what you've actually done and what engineering actually looks like at most of these companies as sort of a project-based interview. And that's one where they're going to ask you, assuming you can talk about things given NDAs, um, to talk about a project that you have done in the past, what were technical challenges, were there any challenges with coworkers? And they're really, again, they're just trying to see how given a project or a problem, do you actually work through it in your day to day? Now, most of these companies will still have at least one data structure and algorithm question, just like the big companies, and they might have one architecture question as well, especially if you're going for more of the senior end role. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's much more balanced with that and these other sort of three types that I mentioned. So lastly, we get to our very small startups, which are 20 person startups. And I think it's hard to necessarily exactly categorize what these types of programming interviews uh, are going to look like. Because I think the thing that's really important to note there is they're small. They probably don't actually have a standardized or super standardized, you know, funnel and process for bringing it into the company because maybe they're not even trying to hire aggressively. And so it's really going to be dependent from company to company. Uh, the startups that I have interviewed at before, though, were really great and very much walked me through exactly what their process was going to look like. So I still don't feel like I was coming in super unprepared, but it definitely like I couldn't pattern match it to anything I'd seen before. So I think the thing there, if you're interviewing at a startup, is just talking to your recruiter or in a lot of times they don't even have recruiters and you're talking directly to an engineer or their CTO or co-founders and just talk to them to really try to understand what are they looking for 
in their interview process and in someone joining their, their startup. And that should give you enough insight to, sort of, to know how to navigate. And even there, you're still going to sometimes see some data checking algorithms. In my experience, they just also like to throw in a lot more um, sort of interviews that are trying to get, how are you really like to work with? But that can take many different forms. Yeah. And how would you recommend practicing for those sort of interviews that are maybe not so straight cut, like algorithms or data structures? Yeah, so at least with the debugging one, let's start there because I think that's an easy one to start with. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of what I think helps with the debugging interview, which is quite popular today, is being really familiar in your language of choice with your debugging tools. I'm an iOS engineer, so a lot of what I did to practice for that was, hey, am I really familiar with Xcode? Do I really know how to take a problem, use the debugger, efficiently use print statements when I need to? Um, and ultimately, like I said, just being really comfortable in the environment in which, with the language that you've chose to interview with. I think with some of the more behavioral ones, um, my first piece of advice is find someone from that company um, for example, Airbnb is quite famous for their culture interviews that they do that aren't done by engineers. Try to find someone from Airbnb, if possible, um, to sort of <coughs> dig into what types of questions they might be asking. And lastly, because not you might not know someone at this company, really utilize your recruiter as a resource to dig into what they're really trying to get out of that specific interview type. Uh, I remember I had interviewed at Dropbox and I had a really awesome recruiter who gave me like a 30 minute spiel on like what each interview was and specifically with their behavioral one, because I do think most companies are looking for slightly different things with their culture behavioral. I just try to ask them like, hey, like, what are you guys really looking for in this interview? Um, and so that way, even if it was, I didn't know what questions, I at least in the back of my mind knew what characteristics and sort of culture they're looking for. Also, most companies have a culture doc that you can read. Um, so when I interviewed at Stripe most recently, I... They sent me a doc of their cultural values and I was like, cool, they're sending you this to me because they want me to look at it. So I think that's also really important. And then sort of more for the working with others, hopefully that's something that you are practicing on your day to day, uh, especially because if I would say the only cases in which you aren't practicing that is if you're doing a career switch or let's say you're a new grad, but new grad, they might not have as much of that because they're going to recognize you have it. You don't have that experience. Um, and then lastly, I think in terms of the project one, or if you're asked to you do any sort of presentation, actually practice your presentation. <laughs> like grab a couple of friends of yours and explain to them the technical concepts that you're trying to convey to the group, ask them to ask you questions, um, and really have them dig into you because I think that's the best kind of prep you can do. So a lot of it is relying on friends, but also your recruiter to really understand what they're looking for in these interviews.